Welcome to tonight's grad worship. Glad that you could join us tonight. Uh, my name is Mary Paul. I'm Vice President of Spiritual Development. You get emails from me every now and then. It might be a quick delete, but that's me saying hello <laughs> and offering a prayer. Um, and certainly uh, our desire when we gather on the just one time each semester is um, that we would be a blessing in your life and that there would be a sense of grad community. So as you know, we uh, join here, but we also join in Liberty Station. And then uh, the Bakersfield campus doesn't have Tuesday night classes, so they actually t take our video that we make tonight, and then they play it in their classes for the next few days and evenings. So ultimately, there's uh, about 300 that join in for worship on this night. So you're part of that, and we're glad that you're here and uh, are looking forward uh, to worshiping together. Oh, they wanted me to announce that the, the open house is all week for the Center for Student Success and Career Development. That's downstairs, 4.30 to 9, all week. So you want to check that out, meet some people who want to walk with you as you um, explore career options. And uh, tonight, we part of why we do this is on the main campus, we have Renewal Week, in which we invite the, um, the staff, faculty, and students to gather and to worship and to receive ministry of a, a speaker that we've invited to come. And our speaker this week is Randy Beckham, and he'll be sharing tonight a uh, short devotional with you. He's a chaplain at Mid-America Nazarene University and professor of intercultural studies. He's lived all over the place in Germany and France, Long Beach, California, just as exotic as all the others. <laughs> and, uh, and now, Mid-America's town, where, where are you now? Olathe in Kansas. So uh, really thrilled to have him with us, and you'll be getting to hear from him in a little bit. Uh, as you know, Nancy Pitts is the grad site chaplain here at Mission Valley, so I'm going to ask her to come and pray over us as we start. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your presence with us, and we want to have open hearts and open minds to hear what you have for us tonight. So we know that you will speak through our speaker, and you will um, also warm our hearts with the music that you've prepared. So bless us as we come before you. In Jesus' name, amen. My wife grew up in Haiti. Her parents were pioneer missionaries there, went to Haiti in 1950. And uh, so one of the great joys of being married to her is I've gotten to go to Haiti several times. And we went to Haiti actually on our honeymoon, stayed in the house her dad built. And that was quite a great thing to do. And then several years later when, our, when we had two children, we have four, but we had two at the time, we went down for a visit in Haiti. And we stayed a couple nights on a, in a beach house, and I got up early one morning with my two children to get them out of the house. Everybody was sleeping, and we took a walk up the beach, and we picked up shells and rocks and things, and we came back, and I laid these shells out on the retaining wall there, and I was saying, look, there's a pretty one. Look, there's a round one. There's a, these are nice shells. Look at these. Isn't that fun? Just occupying our time. And then my father-in-law came out while we were sitting there looking at these shells. And my father-in-law was a, actually a, an alum of Pasadena College, Point, what was, became Point Loma, taught here for several years, and um, PhD in linguistics, a musician, quite a fascinating uh, man. He came out and he took my kids for a little walk and I sat there and watched them and they walked the stretch of beach, the same stretch of beach that I just walked with them almost in our footsteps, and they came back, and they were loaded down with the most beautiful array of shells I've ever seen. They weren't broken, and they weren't faded out like mine, and mine looked silly next to his. I accused him of bringing them out in a little baggie, you know. I said, I walked the same stretch of beach you just walked, and he was, he was showing them all these shells and telling them the scientific, He's a, he, was, he really was a conchologist. He discovered a new species of shell here in San Diego when he was 12 years old. He grew up here. It's in the museum, some up scripts or somewhere. And he was telling them all, the, all about these shells, and this is the only place they come, and where you can find them, and giving them this lecture. And they were just fascinated, kind of looking at me and giggling. I was over with my little pile of shells. 
And I said to him, I said, where in the world did you get those shells? You walked exactly the same place I walked. I didn't see any of those shells. And he said, well, you just have to know what you're looking for. And it didn't seem so profound then, but it's gotten more profound as I've gotten older because he knew what he was looking for. I was just getting, taking anything I found because I didn't know what I was looking for. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says some pretty interesting words to us. And it's kind of in, disingenuous for me to read a, this passage. I'm thinking about it with all these MBA people here, but I'm going to read this anyway. So Jesus says this in the middle of the Sermon on the Mount. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. No one, this is a great reminder for us, no one can be a loyal servant of two masters. Either you'll hate one and love the other, you'll be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot faithfully serve God and money. Therefore, I tell you, don't worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, about your body, what you will wear. If your life, is your life more important than food? Isn't your body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the fields grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. And if that's how God clothes the grass of the field that's here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not so much more clothe you? Oh, you of little faith, do not worry saying, what shall I eat? What shall I drink? What shall I wear? For the pagans run around after all of these things. And your father in heaven knows that you need them. But seek first the kingdom of God. Look for the kingdom of God first. Make the dream of God the priority of your life. What, what does God want? What is the kingdom of God? And make that your first priority. Be, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all of these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of his own. And I don't think Jesus was saying here, you guys need to just drum up enough faith and if you'll just believe, believe enough, God will just give you everything you want. That's not what he was saying here. If you just have enough faith, God will give you everything you need. What Jesus was trying to remind us of here, I think, is that at the center, at the center of everything is a loving, compassionate, generous God, a Father who knows what we need before we ever ask. At the center of everything, there is a loving, compassionate Father who knows what we need. A parent who knows what we need. And you know, I, growing up, I didn't, my parents didn't give me everything I wanted. I didn't love them and trust them because they gave me everything I wanted. I trusted them because I believed they knew best. And we trust God, not for what he gives us or doesn't give us. We trust him because we know he knows best. So look for the kingdom of God first. My father-in-law started this school of mission at, the, at a seminary. He was a musician. He, he wrote compositions. He arranged. He was an accomplished pianist. And uh, in 1998, he had a stroke. And he could still play the piano, and he still could talk to us, still knew who we were, but all the files were all jumbled up, so he couldn't really teach. He couldn't drive. He couldn't tell you his address. A few months before he died, I was, we, they, they moved, they lived with us. We, we cared for them uh, in those last days. <clears throat> and I was taking him for a walk out in front of our house. And I was just reminding him. I was reminding him of 
all the things that he'd done, his life, all the countries he'd been to, all the places he'd taught, the books he'd written, the songs and arrangements he'd made, how the church was thriving in Haiti where he had started to work there and the seminary was going great. And I just was reminding him of things in his life and he was, he was remembering those things while I said it. And then he stopped and he looked at me and he said, you know, I have loved my life. Every part of it. And when he said it, I remembered that walk on the beach. And I remembered him saying to me, you have to know what you're looking for. And when he was a young boy, he gave his life to God. He gave his talents to God. He gave everything he was to God for God to use him. And he made the kingdom of God the priority in his life. And he knew what he was looking for. So all his life he knew what he was looking for. He was looking for the kingdom of God first. And that's why when he was 84 years old, having a stroke and not quite knowing everything, he could look at me and say, you know, I have loved my life. And that, friends, I think that's what your professors here at Point Loma want for you. That's what the people who started this school want for you. That when you're 84, 85 years old, you can walk with your grandchildren and you can look at them and you can say, you know what? I have loved my life. I've loved my life. And God will make that happen for you when we look for the kingdom of God first and make his kingdom our priority. Let me say a benediction for us and let's, and you can go to class. May the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guard you in the wilderness. May he protect you in the storm. May he bring us home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown us. May he bring us home rejoicing safely back into these doors. God bless you. I hope you have a great night of class and good to be with you. Yeah.